What people need to realize is life is a choice. An excuse is a well-planned lie that we tell ourselves and we convince ourselves why we can't do something. But a lot of times we're too scared because we're too scared like, what if? But you live your life in fear and thinking that we're gonna be judged by others. But the reality is someone's opinion of you doesn't have to become your reality. Because if you start living your life to please others, you become a slave to your own life to try to please other people. It took me many years to accept who I am and to be okay with who I am. We all have disabilities, except one of mine is visible. When I transitioned to high school, I really didn't think about my career and stuff like that. I just had big dreams to be a football star. And at the time I was like into girls. I was like, you know, how do you impress a girl or get a girl on a date or like taking the girl to a dance to prom? That's what I was focused on. I didn't worry about what I was gonna be or making money and stuff like that. It was purely the ladies. <laughs> I remember it was August 17th, 1998. I was headed to football practice and I remember it was a 1984 Buick Skylark. I had a rebuilt transmission in there and um, <laughs> I remember I paid $1,000 for it. I had a furry like steering wheel and like dice in the mirror and I had a hula girl on my dash and I always play the radio so loud with the subwoofers that the hula girl would dance for me. Her name was Jasmine. And I just got on the bridge and my left front tire blew out. And it pulled me to the right. So I pulled to the left. And I saw a vehicle that was in front of me and it was coming toward me and I saw the woman in the driver's side window and all I remember is like, I don't want to hit her or harm her, so just pull to the right. That's all I thought. And my vehicle started to skid sideways like this. And I started going to the left-hand ditch. It wasn't a steep slant ditch, it was more like this. And then there was the field. No one I'm gonna hit. I closed my eyes and I loosened the grip. And I said to the Lord, I'm in your hands now. And then I hit. My vehicle started to roll. And as it was rolling, I could hear the shattering clash and the crashing metal. And as it was rolling, it rolled five and a half times. And it actually ejected me out of the driver's side window. And in midair, my own car hit me in the back. And the next thing I know, I opened my eyes and I was looking at the sky. I remember I was at peace. I didn't think about getting up. I just laid there. But all of a sudden, people started appearing about 20 feet from my feet, just all down on that end. And there was actually an officer to my side. I wasn't in pain or nothing like that. They put the chest brace on, the neck brace, and they put me on that, that hardboard back thing just to put in the ambulance and I remember I was at peace I didn't feel pain but when I got to the hospital that's when the pain started to really set in and it was torture the next thing I know I woke up with my mother by my side and the doctor just came in and he bluntly told me that my football days were over and I would never walk again and I realized that life is about to change My injury was T12L1. They diagnosed me as incomplete, which means my spinal cord wasn't completely severed. So there was a chance that I would get feeling back, but nothing was for certain. As I'm laying there in bed, I was thinking, I wished that the accident would have taken my life. What am I gonna do now? My football days are over, I could never walk in. Every night I fell asleep on a damp pillow. 
And at times I thought, maybe suicide is the answer because I hated who I was. And a lot of questions went through my mind. It's like, will I ever get sensation back? What's people gonna think of me? Going back to high school, I thought that was gonna be easy for me. And it wasn't, it was very difficult because going back to high school, you got to see everything that you used to do. So it was going crazy in my mind. And same thing going to the cafeteria to eat and going to the food line for the first time, I got asked, can I help you? Can I help you? I got asked like five times and I felt like a freak. So after that, it just scarred me. So I swore I would never eat in the cafeteria. I went to my coach's office and I went in his, his closet because I told him I had to go to the bathroom. The reality was I just sat alone and ate my food real quick so I could hide from everybody. I gained so much weight. My weight went up to 300 pounds. How do I change? How do I transform my life? Because going back to the weight room, I realized I couldn't do squats, deadlifts, power cleans, all that stuff was gone. But then I realized the one thing I could be was stronger than everybody in the bench press. Regardless if I couldn't feel nothing from the waist down, it was time to change. What's the one thing you gain from losing everything? And it's a perspective. Because then it wasn't about if my glass was half empty or half full. I was just grateful that I had a glass. I waited one year and there was a competition. It was December of 1999. And I eventually dropped my weight down from 300 pounds to the 190s. It was like 195, 197. And that weight meet, the kid in my division was the second heaviest. He bench pressed 265 pounds. And when he was done, I wasn't trying to be cocky or anything like that. I was just confident. And I said, just leave the weight on. I need to warm up. I ended up pushing up 350 pounds. I broke the school record by 75 pounds. And then from then, I realized it wasn't about winning, but it was making it about a statement that it can be done. In school, I did all these powerlifting competitions, and I won. From 2001 to 2002, my career was 39 first place, two seconds, one third. And I had multiple world records at the time. From then, I was just done. I started to work toward my bachelor's. So I had this concept is I'm gonna get my associate's degree because it was cheaper, and then I'll get multiple certifications of fitness, and then eventually go to a four-year university to get my bachelor's. So I stuck with the game plan. So in the gifs of going to get my bachelor's, my main goal was to walk again. I did endless hours working on myself through rehabs in my legs, walking on treadmills to the best of my ability, standing up, kneeling down, doing all this exclusive rehab. And eventually I did. I waited for them to call my name and I walked. And as I was walking to my diploma, I pointed to the audience and looked. And that was pointing to my mom saying, this is for you for believing in me. From that, things started to change in my life because opportunities started to rise. It was at the fall of 2005, I had this urge because I was done with college. I was thinking, huh, I wonder if they have bodybuilding for people in wheelchairs. So I Googled it and I barely found anything. And I was like, oh, there's a show, it's the, 2006 NPC Wheelchair Nationals. I'm like, hmm, I'll just compete. I don't know nothing about bodybuilding, but hey, I'll figure it out. So that's what I did. 
that night I ended up losing. <laughs> it was a different vibe than I ever thought. I'm like, I don't lose. But that night, afterwards, something snapped in me. I was so amazed with the sport because I saw these guys that were worse off than me that weren't completely shredded. And then my perspective changed. I told the guys, I was like, this is amazing. The world needs to know about this. I started to build the main website, which was wheelchairbodybuilding.com. And then from that, I realized that there needed to be a pro show, but it was never done before. So I pursued that and I pushed that concept to the, the highest organization there is, is the NPC and IFBB, and I got a proof for it. And eventually I met bodybuilding.com and they wanted to be the title sponsor of the show. Not only that, but they decided to sign me as an athlete back in 2008. And from then my life changed because doors opened up because I got to work the expos from the LA Fitness Expo to the Arnold Sports Festival to Germany, as well as Vegas for the Olympia. And being in all these places, I met some amazing individuals, even like my dance partner. And she introduced me to wheelchair ballroom dancing. And that led to opportunities where we got to compete against the best wheelchair athletes in the country and eventually becoming the number one USA wheelchair ballroom dance couple that actually got to do special performances for Arnold Schwarzenegger, for Dancing with the Stars, for fundraisers, as well as Pope Francis. So being with such an amazing company like Bodybend.com and having the opportunity actually open the doors to be able to give me a chance to not just tell my story, but also to give back, to impact, to inspire, and to make a difference. And the biggest question people ask me is like, if you could go back, would you take it back and not be in the wheelchair? And the answer is simple, no, I wouldn't take it back. Because at the day of my accident, I realized I was given a, a gift, and that gift was a second chance at life. Because I look at life at a different perspective. So if you focus on what you can do versus what you can't do, and you just make it happen, you don't think, you just do, great things will happen. It took me many years to accept who I am and to be okay with who I am. And the reality is most people in life is not okay with who they are, and they don't accept who they are. See, with me, I'm gonna live my life to the best of my ability that I can be, that I was given this gift. And if you just live your life fearless, you can achieve anything you want. So the reality of life is you have a choice. You either think positive or you think negative. The choice is yours. So if you want to be the best you can be, just follow your dreams, accept who you are, understand what you love to do, and just educate yourself, become the best you can be, become a master of who you're destined to be, and then you can show the world what you're made out of.